Before I get started, I wanted to briefly explain why I would provide a tutorial for setting up TFS focusing on a standalone or isolated environment. That's because for the development environment that I work on most, because of various rules and risk mitigation measures we have to abide by, using Azure DevOps or any other hosted service isn't currently an option. It may be in the future, but it's not something that we can do just yet. So let's get started. If you need to, go ahead and go to a search engine and type download Windows Server or something like that and uh, use some common sense when figuring out which link to follow. And you should come to something like this. In this tutorial, I'm going to use Windows Server 2016 because that's what I have available and that's what I've already downloaded. So if you're downloading the trial version of Windows, go ahead and follow the link. We're going to use the ISO because we're, again, this is going to be standalone. Hit continue, fill out the form, and do whatever you have to do to get the ISO. So now that we have our Windows installation media, we're going to have to get the Team Foundation server. So in order to do that, just go to visualstudio.com, uh, click downloads at the top, Scroll down to the Team Foundation server download, whatever year and update it is. You'll see two, two versions here, right? So here's Team Foundation server, uh, we'll call that proper. And here's Team Foundation server express. In this tutorial, I'm going to set up Team Foundation server express because it's free. Over here, they have the web installer or the ISO that you can download. A lot of times I've noticed that when I come here, the ISO is not available yet. They just have the web installer. And so I'm going to show you how to set up a standalone instance with a standalone installer from the web installer. So just go ahead and download that. So now I've got my Windows Server ISO right here in this really small executable that's about two and a half megs. That is a web installer. Uh, first thing I need to do is turn this into a standalone installer. Obviously that does not contain everything that it needs to set up Team Foundation Server without reaching out to the internet. So. Um, quickest and easiest way that I know how to do that is to uh, create a folder, throw it in there, and then you'll have your executable again, right click, drag it over here, create a shortcut. And now we're going to modify this shortcut. So right click, go to properties, and under the target right here, at the end of this line, whether there's a quote or not, if there's a quote like this, you're going to want to do it outside the quote. I don't have them, so we're going to do a forward slash layout and hit OK. Now, when you double click on the shortcut, it's going to run the executable with that layout switch, which means the first thing it's going to do is ask you for a download location. So you can go ahead and browse to the folder you're, right, you're at just now and hit download. This will download everything that's needed in order to set up TFS on premises, isolated without internet access. All right, so you've got your TFS folder and you got your ISO. All right, so the next thing we're going to do in this tutorial is set up Windows Server. Um, this is just going to be a quick rundown on a standard installation that will have the resources available to run TFS. So if you're doing it on a physical server, go ahead, right click Burn Image, and go boot your machine off of it. Uh, for this tutorial and in my environment, what we do is we just host the server in Hyper-V. Wherever your vhost is, just copy your ISO to a location where it's available to the vhost. In my case, I just put it on the desktop. You can't copy and paste the ISO through a remote desktop window because the file is more than 2 gigs. So you'll have to use a file share or something. In the next video, we'll pick up right here, create the virtual machine, and get TFS up and running. Thanks for watching.